you remember what we have been discussing? You? We have been discussing what? With that? Last few weeks, what did we discuss? Um, we were talking about like the eightfold path and um, right. the, different, the eight different steps. Noble eightfold path. Now, I like to hear you all of you say noble eightfold path. Who can say that? Noble Eightfold Path. Yes, you, with that. Um, so the first one is a uh, right understanding. Uh-huh. Uh, right thought. Mm -hmm. Right speech. Right intention. Um, right action. No, right, right understanding. Then... Right, the intention, right speech, and then uh, right uh, action. Action, yes. Uh, right livelihood. Yeah. Right effort. Uh huh. Right mindfulness and uh, right concentration. Okay, now we are on right mindfulness. I have talked to you all. On right mindfulness, I gave three talks already. And uh, this is so important, I'm going to spend more time on talking uh, on right and right uh, mindfulness. <clears throat> mindfulness is, uh, is such a wonderful uh, practice. Uh, it grants you insight into the three characteristics of all existing things. What are the three characteristics that everything in the whole world, on the universe, everything is marked with these three characteristics? And you must listen to it very carefully. Perhaps you may not uh, comprehend it, it right now, but as you uh, mature, uh, you will understand it very, very carefully, very clearly. Now listen carefully. First one of these three characteristics is number one is uh, Changing, impermanence, impermanence. Now, what is impermanent? Our body is impermanent. We all know when we were born, we were born as very tiny little babies, very tiny. And every day you can see the baby is growing. Growing, 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 growing. And then slowly, slowly the baby will be able to turn over. Baby is on, on the baby's back. And then after a couple of weeks, baby turns over and then hands and legs are moving. Then slowly baby begins to smile. And then baby uh, slowly learn to crawl. Baby learn to sit up and slowly start standing and falls down again standing and falling and then began to walk slowly 
and then begin to run and then begin to talk. All this happened because of the changes in the body. The body is changing from one moment to next moment, body is changing. That is why you all are like this now, 10 years, 12 years, 9 years, 6 years, 4 years, 5 years, 16 years, and so forth and so on. We keep, as we grow, our appearance change, and we lose our teeth, and new set of tooth come up, <coughs> come out. Then we can speak more and more clearly. We can run, we can play, and we can study, read, write, all these things we can do because of the changes that is taking place in us. Always we are changing. And this changes keeps going on and on and on and on, never stop. And these changes of our physical body. And also, you know, we breathe. When we breathe, we breathe oxygen into our lungs. When the lungs or the hemoglobin come into lungs will be charged with oxygen. And then that hemoglobin's blood cells go to the heart. Then heart pumps. Then this blood cells with oxygen go round the world, around the body. Every cell in our body needs oxygen to live. And then next moment, all the cells lose oxygen. When we breathe in, those oxygen uh, depleted blood cells uh, are, uh, uh, blood cells return to the heart again. Then heart pumps, they come to the lungs again. Then lungs get oxygen and then send back to the heart. And this keeps happening all the time. All the time. All the time. And that is because of the changes. Blood cells change. Blood cell loses its oxygen, and then new oxygen comes through the breathing, and then they lose. Again, we breathe, again, we bring oxygen, and that is happening all the time from the moment we were born till we die. This happens. And therefore, the breath is called body conditioner. Body conditioner. And every cell is dying, new cells are born. Every cell die, new cell is born. And that is happening. All this, uh, in short, we say impermanence or changes. Similarly, our feelings, whether pleasant feeling or unpleasant feeling or uh, neither pleasant nor unpleasant feeling, whatever feeling we have, they also change. They also are impermanent and keep changing, 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 changing all the time. And then <clears throat> we become aware of them. Our awareness also changes. It doesn't stay the same always. They change. And our thoughts, whether they are right thoughts or wrong thoughts or thoughts about the past or memories, ideas, 
they always change, change in ourselves, within us. And also our consciousness change. And this is the first of the three characteristics. That means everything change. And these changes, changes always is not, are not very pleasant. For instance, you eat in the morning and few hours later you feel hungry and then you have to eat again, then again and again. You feel hungry, hungry, eat, 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 and then you feel thirsty. You are thirsty. Then you have to drink and drink and drink. You feel tired. You have to rest. Uh, you feel sleepy. You go to sleep. When you eat, you cannot keep the food inside all the time. You have to discharge it. When you drink water, water cannot stay in the body always. You have to discharge it. So always this cycle of change takes place in us all the time. This happens to us. This happens to plants, animals, trees, and so forth. They all go through this process or cycle of changes. Nothing remains without changing. And this is called impermanence. Nothing remains permanent. You see, you sometimes think your body is permanent. Because when you sleep and get up today, you feel that you are the same person as yesterday. No, not so. You have changed. And you think tomorrow you will be like this. No. Tomorrow you will feel different because you have changed. Your mood is, mood is changing. Your temperament changes. Your attitude changes. Your... Um, uh, uh, emotion changes. All these are changing, changing, changing all the time. Now, what we do with what, what mindfulness uh, mindfulness does with the changes? When we are mindful, we understand, we experience, and we know that changes are taking place. If we don't pay attention, we don't know the changes. All the changes are taking place always, all the time. If we don't pay attention, we are not very much aware of these changes. <clears throat> so this is one thing that you have to remember one of the three characteristics that is number one is impermanence or changes changes are always not very pleasant not very happy for instance you change your uh, uh, circle of friends you go to another class you had some friends in your class and you had to leave these friends to go to the go to another class. Your teacher is different. Your desk is different. Your environment is different. You eat maybe different food. You see different persons. All these different things happening to you may not make you happy. <clears throat> And this is the second thing we have to understand. Whatever change, whatever changes, 
whatever change take whatever changes that thing does not make us happy at least we have to remember this too the third is of course is most difficult for not only you but for everybody even adults difficult what is that that is that there is nothing to control this nothing to stop changing you may think of anything that thing cannot control your changes <clears throat> and that is the third thing we have to be mindful of also you use you can use any object to develop your mindfulness so long as it helps you gain insight into these three characteristics not one particular object any object you you can see these three characteristics in any object whether it is uh, things that you see that you hear any sight anything you see any person animal uh, plants trees wood everything is changing any sound you hear sound of music uh, sound of songs sound of talk sound of uh, animals sound uh, bird sounds uh, water uh, sound of water running wind blowing any sound you hear is changing no sound no voice for instance i'm talking now you hear my voice as soon as i stop my talk my voice is gone it cannot stay in the ear unless you of course unless you record it but otherwise when i stop talking you don't hear my voice and also if you do not pay attention to my voice and look here and there and do various other things you cannot hear my voice and sound comes to our ears through sound waves through air waves and our ears have to be in good condition to hear the sound must be clear for us to hear there must be air for the sound to travel and uh, you also have to pay attention then only you hear a sound otherwise sound appear and disappear appear and disappear what you heard now is no longer in one seconds later and therefore sound is changing then smell think of any smell a smell of flowers a smell of incense a smell of perfumes um, a smell of your food uh, drinks anything you smell that smell also is changing no smell remains the same always it changes when you taste food all kind of food you taste the taste in your mouth doesn't stay always it changes what you while you are eating there is a taste as you as you as you as 
you finished eating, that taste is gone. No longer can you find that taste. You taste all sort of things. Taste of uh, uh, vegetable, taste of meat, taste of uh, drinks, uh, taste of seed, uh, apple uh, taste, orange taste, banana taste, and all kind of taste we taste. But all these tastes, immediately after we finish tasting, is gone. And it happens in our own experience. We experience taste, and then we experience the change of taste, disappearing of change. Similarly, touch. There are many things we touch. The moment we touch, we feel the touch. As soon as we withdraw from the touch, that feeling is no longer there. So, and even worse than that is our thought. Thought arises and passes away. Thought appear and disappear. Thought uh, of our past experience, like memories, sometimes ideas appear in our mind and they disappear. So this is what we call impermanence. When we practice mindfulness, friends, mindfulness is a seven aspect of the Noble Eightfold Path, seven step. We experience these changes. Then we can do this practice, we can pay attention to them in any posture, any posture, sitting, standing, walking, running, and playing, eating, drinking, whatever activities we are engaged in, these changes we can notice. In the, I can see you, you, are, you are sitting in one posture for a few minutes and I can see you changing. I can see you moving. I can see you lifting your hair, legs and twisting your body and turning your head. Because you cannot keep them in one place all the time because of the changes. The change is taking start in within you, and that change prompts you to move. And that is happening intentionally or unintentionally, inside or outside. These changes take place. So uh, whether we are sitting like you, when you get up and oh, that time changes, when you walk, the uh, steps, every step changes. And uh, when we drink, every uh, mouthful of drink change and goes become warm in the mouth and it goes to the stomach. There it changes and change into uh, hell, uh, to, uh, into urine and we pass. So all these uh, things appear and disappear and that is called impermanence, number one of the three characteristics. So we, have, we don't have to, when, even when you sleep, <clears throat> we have to breathe in and out, in and out, in and out. Why? The breath is changing. If, if the breath doesn't change, we have to breathe only once. Since breath is changing all the time, we have to breathe again and again and again and again. As I mentioned, you feel uh, thirsty, you drink. When you feel hungry, you eat. And when you feel sleepy, you sleep. And when you get up, you feel fresh. When you, before you go to sleep, you feel tired. When you get up in the morning, you feel fresh. Why? The tiredness was permanent. Tiredness is impermanent. Tiredness is gone. The body is refreshed. And uh, next morning you feel very 
fresh. So you experience impermanence always, all your life, day and night, uh, in any posture, any time, anywhere. If children, these changes are taking place not only in us, all animals, all plants, trees, air, fire, temperature, everything, even this world where we live is revolving, rotating, taking us along with that. And this world rotates around the sun. And it doesn't stay long. It's always moving. And because of the gravity, uh, it doesn't stay in one place. It keeps moving. Every little tiny thing, including any little insect, any little atom, molecule, all these are changing, 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 changing all the time. And this we see with our mindfulness. This is called paying attention to the changes. Out of these three characteristics, most uh, uh, clear to us is the changes. And that we know, we understand <clears throat> uh, when we pay attention to these characteristics. Then, you know, the purpose of mindfulness practice is very, very big purpose, very great purpose. What is this purpose? The purpose is to become wise. The practice of mindfulness, the purpose of the practice of mindfulness is to become wise. Children, wisdom is the most valuable thing in our life. Wisdom. And we want to be wise. In order to be wise, we have to practice mindfulness. Mindfulness is not something that we simply discuss or read about, but mindfulness is something we practice. For this practice, there are various ways, various methods uh, to practice mindfulness. And it, this, this practice opened our so-called wisdom eye. And to have uh, insight, to see the true nature of all existing things. Children, people do not see the true nature of all existing things. They don't see things exactly as they are. The mindfulness helps us to see things exactly as they are. Now, as I plan, and every time I talk, I tell children that I speak only 30 minutes. Today I spoke a little longer. And the remaining 30 minutes, I want you to use to ask questions. Yes, you have a question? <clears throat> So I noticed that sometimes the Lord Buddha, he puts up certain hand signals when talking to people, uh, like giving a blessing. He sometimes gives a signal using his hand. Yeah. Blessing. You know, uh, could you repeat the question again? Uh, normally, Buddha Sadhu, when we look at the pictures, I see sometimes that he has a certain sign while using his hands. When you look at what? Uh, Bodhisattva's pictures, sometimes uh, he po uh, positions his hand in some way, like sometimes like this. Uh -huh. So I wanted to know what the meaning of that was. When you look at the Buddha? Yeah, the, no, the, um, the way he positions his hand. Like this? Yeah, something like that. Ah, I see. The hand. Yeah. Buddha's hand. 
organ. Uh, he has this kind of uh, posture, this. And this posture is to show one thing, no fear. That means don't be afraid of the Buddha. That means he brings confidence, trust, and he brings peace. He is friendly, and therefore don't be afraid of me. I am your friend. That is one meaning. Second meaning is, I don't hold on to even this much. With, when you hold the thumb and index finger, that means I don't hold on even to this much. That means I have no desire, no desire whatsoever. Even this much desire I don't have. These are the two meaning of holding hand like this. One is called uh, Abhaya Mudra, in Pali it's called Abhaya. Uh, Bhaya means fear. Abhaya means no fear. Other Pali word is uh, Sunya. Sunya means empty. I don't hold even this much greed. My mind is totally <coughs> free from greed. <coughs> These are the two meanings of holding finger like that. Thank you, Bhante. You are welcome. Any other question? Anybody else? <coughs> yes. Oh, you are imitating that. <laughs> uh, anybody else has any question? Yeah. It is young boy. You have a question? <laughs> Okay. Oh. There is princess, you have a question? With a crown? No question. <laughs> How can I ask question? <laughs> yeah. How can I ask question? Okay. Uh, what is this? Clean tan? Hi, Bandi. I, like, I would like to ask what is the other important mudras that would the, uh, the Lord Buddha uh, have? Okay, Kulin. Uh, one is that Abhay Mudra, that is very important. And the other is Desana Mudra. Desana Mudra is uh, Buddha, I cannot imitate that Buddha holds his uh, both hands like this. That is called Desana Mudra. In the when he, <clears throat> when he explained a very subtle point, very subtle point, he uses both hands and four fingers like this. That also is a very good, uh, very important uh, mudra. And there is a uh, Abhay Mudra, uh, Desana Mudra. There is another mudra called Samadhi, Samadhi Mudra. Samadhi Mudra is sitting in meditation posture, fully cross-legged, in full lotus posture. Uh, he sit the body, keeping the body straight, upright, and uh, eyes half closed and face looks very peaceful. That is called Samadhi Mudra. And there are, uh, there is a new posture that uh, Thai statues you can see, uh, walking. Uh, in, that is not in other countries, but in Thai tradition, they have this walking mudra. <clears throat> 
దేశనా ముద్ర చంకమణ ముద్ర సమాధి ముద్ర అభయ ముద్ర అండ్ శూన్యత శూన్యత ముద్ర ఫైవ్ ముద్రాస్ ఐ కెన్ థింక్ రైట్ నౌ and these all these mudras are equally important because they express the buddha's uh, nature or buddha's quality okay thank you bande very beautiful okay i did not know that you are listening i think it's a good that you listen yes me and nate this listen me and nate are listening thank you bande very good very good uh any uh, other children have any question mm-hmm. yeah even adults can without you have any question mm-hmm. um i don't have i don't really have any uh questions today okay and guna uh, tilaka yes ham tirvane i have a question yeah uh, so the, the change and the impermanence you mentioned uh, yeah. we have been taught that it is for conditioned things uh, for sankhara so yeah. my question is how is our breath when we are breathing uh, how uh, how uh, what uh, how do we uh, see that uh, how do we understand that it is also a conditioned thing uh, i we, think Uh, that is a very good that is a really adults question uh, i did not mention that uh, to children because it is little uh, uh, too much for them a real impermanence that we have to develop is sankhara dukkha sankhara uh, anicca sabbe sankhara anicca you see that uh, anicca vata sankhara and so forth in when somebody passes away uh, people put a banner in the banner they write sabbe sankhara anicca and there sankhara is not that dead body sankhara are three types punya bi sankhara apunya bi sankhara aninja bi sankhara punya bi sankhara is uh, what we call wholesome meritorious deeds meritorious thoughts meritorious words meritorious deeds they are wholesome and these wholesome meritorious thoughts words deeds are impermanent they are not permanent why suppose we commit wholesome meritorious deeds then what happen as a result we will be reborn in a pleasant state of existence like human being or one of the six divine realms we will be born but these merits that brought us to this state of existence doesn't last too long when the when the life as for, for instance human being uh live maybe 80 90 100 even 120 years that is the limit after that that merit is over then the the merit that you have committed to be born as a human being will slowly slowly exhaust wear out and go on depleting and then when that merit is uh, its its power is completely exhausted then you lose your life and you are you are you die and then after that you don't know where you will you will be born suppose you were born as a as a divine being still their life span is uh, limited maybe to few thousands of years uh, even thousand is a limit if you say even 100000 that also is a limit when they hit the limit then they lose that life 
then of course when we commit unwholesome uh, sankharas, uh, we will be reborn in unwholesome places like uh, animals, ghosts and goblins and demons and, uh, and in, even in a hellish play, place, we will be born. And there we continue suffering in that state until that unwholesome sankhara exhaust. Then we will be pushed back to some other plane of existence. And therefore sankharas are not permanent. Unwholesome sankharas are impermanent. Wholesome sankharas are impermanent. Many people then, well, if unwholesome sankharas are impermanent, and wholesome sankharas are impermanent. What about imperturbable sankharas? Imperturbable sankhara means <coughs> sankharas that we commit in through the practice of meditation. We meditate and attain jhanic stages. <coughs> First jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana, even uh, ayatanas. Uh, Akasana and Kat and Vinyan and Kat and Akin Tanya and Nevsanya and Yasanya. This state, material uh, Janic stage and immaterial Janic stage. When we commit material Janic stage, we will be reborn in 16 material Brahma realms. They have very fine material body. And if we commit uh, imperturbable, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, arupa jnanic meditation. Arupa means there is no form, uh, physical form, but uh, mental state we cultivate. And then in that state we die, and then we will be reborn in arupa Brahma realms. And each of them, would be eons and eons lifespan. And e even an eon is a limit. And these sankharas, therefore, whether they are wholesome sankhara, unwholesome sankhara, imper imperturbable sankhara, they all are impermanent. And that is the uh, uh, impermanence that we have to be very uh, mindful of and uh, in uh, any of these sankharas, wholesome or unwholesome, in purpose, keep us going in sankhara, round and round and round and round and merry go round, keep playing uh, and going up and down, up and down all the time. And therefore, we have to commit uh, mental states, let's call. Uh, kamma, kamma, kaya kamma, kamma, kaya kamma. That is uh, condition, uh, kamma that ends kammas, sankara that ends sankara. Sankara ending, we commit sankara ending kamma. And they're called Kamma Kaye Jnana. Kamma Kaye Jnana. Now, what is that? That is uh, the practice with deep mindfulness practice. We develop a mental state to liberate our greed, hatred, and delusion. Liberate ourselves from greed, hatred, and delusion. And then we will not commit any karma which can bring us to another life. That means in this very life, this is called in Ratana Sutta. Ratana Sutta, there is a stanza towards the end of the Sutta or last uh, stanza is Kinang Puranang Navang Nati Sambhava. Viratta chitta ayata ke bhasmin te khina beja avirulhi chanda nibbanti dhira yathayam padipo. Now, khinang puranang. 
previous or old seeds of karma destroyed and new karma seeds are not generated and then the person passes away just like the flame of a lamp goes out without leaving a trace. There has been a discussion in the past, in the Buddha's time, in a hole called Kutuhala Sala. Kutuhala means uh, inquis inquisitiveness. And that hole was there for people who have inquisit inquisitiveness. Uh, they have questions, they have doubt, uh, they meet in that hall and bring, the, bring up their uh, doubts their, to get them clarified. So each person gets up and talk about uh, uh, their ideas and how uh, to show how to get rid of this doubt and uh, they are inquisitive, uh, they clarify. There was a man called Vacha, Vacha Gotha, who came to see the Buddha and said, uh, Venerable Gautama Buddha, in the Kusuhala Saha, we heard that uh, Sanjay Bellati Buddha, Pakuda Kajjayana, Nigarnata Buddha, Ajita Kesa Kambala, and so forth. There are six famous teachers who have very great uh, followings. And they all came and declared that when they are uh, people pass away, they will be reborn in such and such a place. The, someone who, who has developed the mind and uh, gained very high pure state of mind. And then when that person passes away, that person will be reborn in such and such a such and such a place. But they also discussed that Bhante Venerable Gautama doesn't say anything. He says, some people, uh, he says, would take rebirth in such and such a place. When some other persons pass away, Venerable Gautama doesn't say the place where they were born. So we all got confused. And in the Kutuhala Sala, they all discussed this. So I want to know, what is your position? Then Buddha said, uh, Vajja, I talk, I, I tell those who have uh, upadana, clinging, will take rebirth after this in such and such a place. But one who does not have a clinging will not be reborn. That means he end his sankara, sankara which uh, uh, generates next life. All those who have not uh, ended their clinging, all those who have clinging will be reborn. Those who have ended their clinging, completely exhausted their clinging, will not take birth, that is an arahant. So until such time, these sankharas have a great power to generate life after life and after life. And therefore, we have to see impermanence of this sankhara. Even these sankharas that generate life can be brought to an end because that sankara is not permanent. And when we say sabbe sankara anicca, that stanza, that passage or sentence means all sankaras, wholesome, unwholesome, imperturbable, all are impermanent. And when we realize this impermanence through the practice of mindfulness, we can end this sankhara and will not have any more rebirth. 
Thank you, Hamdruni. Okay, this is a little too much for children, but uh, eventually when they mature, uh, they can understand it. Okay, any other question? Alhamdulillah, <clears throat> like, uh, so if somebody achieves uh, like a dhyana state, uh, when he dies, uh, will, it, uh, will it get expired like in the next birth? Uh, will he have the same status or like he has to do it again? Okay. You know, as I mentioned, people die with uh, wholesome state of mind, unwholesome state of mind, and jhanic state of mind. When they die with the jhanic state of mind, depending on the jhana, if it is Rupa jhana, that person will be reborn in Rupa Brahma world. If the person is in Arupa jhanic state, and dies in that state, he will be reborn in Arupa Janic state. Jhana is not a guarantee for stopping rebirth. Jhana is a temporary suspension of hindrances. Hindrances are sus suspended uh, temporarily as long as the person is in the Janic stage, hindrances are suppressed. It is just like suppose there is a lake a pond full of moss. When you want to take water, you put a pot and press down, then the moss will give way and clear water you can get into the pot. As soon as you leave the pot, all the moss come and cover the surface. Similarly, as long as a person is in the jhanic state, that person hindrances like greed, hatred, uh, sleepiness and drowsiness, restlessness and worry and doubt, these are the five hindrances, they will be suppressed during the jhanic stage in person, during the person uh, stay in jhana. And during that time, it's suppressed. As soon as the person's mind loses concentration, all the hindrances will come and cover the mind. And the hindrances are fetters. And the fetters are called uh, sometimes taints, sometimes people call fermentations. And the fermentation or taints, there is another stage called anusaya. Anusaya, asava, sanyojana, and nivarana. These are the four stages. The lowest is anusaya stage. Anusaya means like is, is a very, very subtle defilement remains in our subconscious mind. And if we don't learn to go right down into that subconscious mind, if, that, if we can destroy at that level, then it will not grow up to Anusaya level. If we take care of that Asava level, then it will not grow up to Sanyojana level. If we take care of Sanyojana, then there will not be hindrances to arise. So these are the things that we do with deep meditation. Only then the rebirth will stop. Jhana, as you know, before Buddha came and attained enlightenment, uh, all the rishis, munis, mendicants, uh, sages had jhanas. And Siddhartha, Gautama, Bodhisattva also followed their path for a while and then realized this is not the end of samsara. It is just uh, repeating itself. And then he discovered the method to get out of samsara. That method is called vipassana method.
Okay. Anybody has any other question? <clears throat> If you don't have any more question, I like to wish you happy Halloween. <laughs> so you go with uh, Halloween costumes and collect a lot of candy, but don't eat them right away. Bring home, open it, show to your parents, and if something you your parents approve and then eat otherwise throw away okay so with this i like to end this session and meet see you next sunday okay bye thank you